on board, here aboard. Let's get this over with. <laughs> well, look who's here. New recruits. Well, <laughs> let's fuck some shit up. What's that? I... I... Uh, you are you alright? Uh, I... Uh, I... Uh, I just had a bad dream. I, I... Um... Did you get taller? Wait, what? Izuku, he runs to the bathroom window and sees like, yeah, he's got... Uh, he's, uh, changed a little bit. Hell, he barely knows the whole, changing his whole, uh, you say, hair color. But with the gray skin, the red eye, reddish yellow eyes, as well as the whole fact that, yeah, he's, uh, taller than Inko. More than, more so than canon. Is, well, it's a little bit more built. More along the line of lean. So, don't tell me that, that was real. What? Uh, nothing. <sighs> you know what? I, I'm a little tired, so, um, what's for breakfast? Um, bacon, eggs, and pancakes? Are you sure you're alright? I mean, I know you recently learned that you had avoided your quirk and everything, but still, I don't want you to end up. Trust me, mom. It's it's fine. It's 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 cool. Uh, at least I hope so. Mm. As yeah, he goes throughout his whole day and tries not to break anything. He has an enhanced strength, speed, durability, so, yeah, Death is known for being the, the leader, as well as, I think he is the strongest of them all. So, Izuku, not used to being these things, he has to adjust. Oh, that poor, poor boy. But when he does it, I mean, with his classmates at school, is when everyone really starts poking at him, trying to get answers. Like, how long have you really had this quirk? What is it like? What can you do with it? No, it's suddenly giving him more attention. And Bakugo pretty much being uh, distant. <sighs> Why is he the only one getting attention now? Because of a damn good work. Him nobly getting angry, and Izuku recognizes this. Not only is Bogo's canon anger and attitude, but. Uh. Gotchan, are you mad at me for some reason? No. I. I mean, yes, I. Shut up and tell us about your quirk. Um, well, I'm strong. So are a lot of heroes. Next, fast. A lot of heroes are fast. Keep talking. I can give and take away life energy. What? As everyone is just looking in shock, like, wait, what are you talking about? That? What do you mean? Um, Izuku just looking at them, just slide y'all, just wondering, he's like, what do you mean by that? Please, we don't need details. Then he looks at a flower. It's wilted, dying. He's like, whose turn was to take care of it? Everyone just looking at Bakugo, he's like, well, watch this. 
as he slowly brings the plant back to life. Everyone amazed at this. Now, I can also, as he takes it back. Everyone getting scared up until he gives it the life energy back again. Showing that, yeah, it's still Izuku, he's just a lot stronger now. But as soon as people start treating him differently, wanting to hang out with him, he's distant. For some reason, he's, though he would love to be friends with him, he, like, it doesn't feel right. He he senses the fakeness. Because y'all yeah, know, as soon as something good starts happening to y'all, then everyone has a handout. Like, say you just won the lottery, and then people who you ain't talked to in God knows how long, like, hey, how you doing? I'm gonna go out for a drink. That's what Izuku's sensing. He's like, uh, yeah, no. But, from, for one odd reason, he, he doesn't know why. He just f feels drawn to Bakugo. He doesn't know why, but... It's a familiar feeling. I like old ch old childhood friends. It's more like a sibling esque rivalry. And <laughs> Bakugo starts sensing this as well. But when it comes to the whole ten months of training, Izuku asks Inko, "Can he just have some time to himself?" Out of nowhere, he's. What? Why you want to leave? I'll be back. It's, it's just I. I want to train with this quirk. I'm not used to it. I, I want to be able to help people without, you know, draining the life out of someone. Are you gonna come back? I promise I will. As Izuku, he goes on an overseas journey to wherever the hell he he can really think of, so he heads straight towards America. He's wow. There are some things are a bit different here, now, aren't they? He's just looking around. He he notices everyone's staring at him, but. Ultimately ignoring him. He feels a little out of place, but not so much that it's completely awkward. Up until the point where he actually finds himself huh, in a bookstore. Him just... Hmm, I don't know why. I don't know why I was chosen to be one of these Nephilim things. Nephilim? Huh? You, you, you want to know about Nephilim? Uh, sure. Well, they're creations of angel and de demon unions. Really? What else can you tell me about them? Well, they're highly strong and somewhat seem as abominations or not things that weren't supposed to come and come to be really what can you tell me about the four horsemen what yeah um well there's war famine wait 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 what about uh, death. <laughs> uh, um, he's the most dangerous. Everywhere he goes, death always follows. Hence the name. It's not wise to upset him or, you know, Really? But what if he doesn't mean to hurt anyone? 
That doesn't matter. The corpses are his presence just invites nothing but tragedy. At least with war you have a chance of surviving, but with death it's inevitable. War can lead to death, too. I know, that's the thing. So can famine and all the others. Yes, it leads to death. That's what's scary. No matter what, one always leads. Either one of them just leads to death. Make him the most powerful, the scariest, and the... One thing you can be for certain is that no one can escape death. It comes for everyone. War can be prevented. Famine as well, but death is only a matter of time. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This might be... This could be a little much for someone who's not familiar with, you know... Um, so, are you interested in any books here? I'd like to know about the, more about the horsemen. Very well. As Izuku collects as many books related to the horsemen as he can from... And him, upon reading it, is like... There's nothing here about strife. Or maybe something different. Or, or a different say. I'm just thinking, maybe Strife isn't a horseman or something? Or maybe from a different uh, mythos? Upon him doing his knowledge, he feels somewhat drawn towards something. This weird alleyway just seems to call to him for some odd reason. And before he knows it, he gets pulled into this swirling blood red vortex that has him smack dab in the middle of nowhere. Um, where am I? No one's answering. No one's there to greet him. No one's there to at least tell him. Uh, who are you? It's nothing like that. It's just... Quiet. And then, here's a ringing in his ears, just annoying, high-pitched whining that keeps getting louder and louder, but slowly subside the closer he gets his strange cave. And upon entering, he is wait stone heads. So you finally come, death. Uh. You wait, you, you little guys who were calling me before when I was getting suffocated. Yes. Now is your moment to fully reawaken what what are you talking about you are a horseman death and you are being tasked with finding the rest of your siblings war fury and strife to reunite the horsemen um where are they He said that you were supposed to find them. Meaning we will only point you towards favorable options. Wait, so are they already chosen or do I have to awaken something? They are predestined. You've noticed it before, haven't you? Yes, you have met one 
of your siblings before. Uh, who was it? That is for you to find out. And reawaken them. Uh, so what you're saying is... It's my duty to assemble the horsemen. Yes, you have to awaken them, as well as, you could say, get them prepared for the end of days. Once that happens, we will call upon you all. But, if you fail to awaken all of them, you will not be at full strength. Um, so, so how's this, how's this whole end of days thing work? Well, first, all of the seals must be broken, initiating it. If one remains intact, that means that the apocalypse is not on, as you would say world so we won't show up or need to as long as at least one of the seals remains intact correct though you can appear you are not to act without our say so but what people get hurt that is of no Concern of yours. Uh, but I can't just let people get hurt. You cannot save everyone, death. <laughs> if anything, you should, uh, let's say, go with it. You want me just to allow people to die? Angels, demons, humans. I mean, the predecessors. Especially you. Exterminate the rest of the Nephilim. Wait, 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 what are you talking about? I was saying, millennia ago, you your siblings killed the rest of the Nephilim. But why? Before they go to the balance, what else? The balance, at the end of the day, is all that needs to remain. And you, horsemen, maintain it in our name. Oh, but... There are no buts. You and your siblings are. You hear me? You are our attack dogs when needed, guard dogs when told, and that's the end of that. <laughs> but I. Why? We gave you your power. We made you the horseman. Uh, so you did. Now, you must train. Since you are a crucial part of the balance, you should take up residence for the remainder of your time here. And hmm, go to your castle. A castle? What? What castle? You do have a lot to learn. However, it is of no consequence to us. Let's just say the you before had taken up residence in this realm. So, I would suggest you head down there 
and make yourself a home for as long as you see it necessary. And once you are prepared to leave, then, and only then, you shall be able to be on the search for your siblings. Good luck, death. You'll need it.